Next up, taking a peek at the media screen for the vehicle. So this is the Uconnect 4C media screen, and it's the option, as you can see along the bottom tray, without navigation. So we do have the option for factory navigation inside of this thing. You'd have to get it at ordering at time for the factory. Uh, if we look at the SXT, so the base version of the vehicle, that's going to be a 7-inch Uconnect 4 screen instead. But outside of that, you go for the GT or higher, and it's going to look pretty much like this. Like I said, with the exception of if you opt for navigation, in which case you'll have factory nav there. But honestly, even though this one doesn't have it, and if yours doesn't have it, this vehicle still does support Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, so we could use Google Maps, Apple Maps, or Waze directly through this middle screen, just depending on the device that you use. But let's go through everything that you need to know about this media screen. So starting off, this is typically going to be the home screen that we're met with. Obviously, like if you're on climate controls, whatever the case may be, we're just going to jump back home to our media along the bottom left hand side. Along the top, we also do have, you can see our current time. We've also got, which the time actually is fairly off there, like it's kind of crazy right now. So I've got to adjust that just a teeny little bit. And then we'd have our temperature up along the top there as well. These are all of our active presets. So as you can see there, we've got a series of different options available there. On the Sirius XM side of things, we go AM, FM, etc. We can have a series of different presets for all of these different options. Now, if we wanted to save things as a preset, we've got a few different ways we can do it. If we go to Tune, and if we go to a random radio station, let's just hit Go, so we don't have that station saved, all we have to do is just press and hold any of the available preset slots. And it should take a second, there we go, and it saved that now as a preset. And it's really easy to do, so we just go to whatever station we want to, we can tune this way, we can tune and seek this way instead if we want to. Once you've got it, all you're going to do is press and hold in order to save. We can also browse down there in order to see what presets we currently have. And then we've also got the flexibility of being able to delete all of our presets that way if we want to. So it's pretty straightforward to go. Like I said, we've got a mix. We've got AM, FM, Sirius, XM, additional sources. So we've got a few other things. So if our phone is connected, we potentially have Bluetooth audio. We can also hook up through a 3.5 mil cable if we want to listen to some old school radio there. We've got a few USB ports. So if you had a USB stick with MP3s, that would show up there as an available option as well. Now, a few other things from there. We can browse, as I mentioned, we can scroll between, and that's the same whether we're on AM, FM, Sirius XM. If we were listening to our phone audio, we could also uh, change between songs by going left or right, etc. Now, I did also show you, so we could just press and hold if we wanted to seek that way on top of that, so it's pretty straightforward. We can hit audio along the side, the bottom right-hand side there, in order to be able to move between all of our different presets. So we've got our balance fade, so we can easily adjust as necessary. If you're the only one in the car, you'd obviously want to have it more focused on you. If you want more of like a like fulfilling audio experience, just right in the center is good. We've got our equalizer, so our bass, mid-range, and treble. I would probably say in this thing, bass cranked a little bit, mid-range down, and then treble down a tiny little bit would give you pretty good audio. Now, we've got a series of different options for the charger for audio as well. This specific one has the upgraded Harman Kardon sound system, which means that we've got a 19-speaker system, and it sounds amazing. Otherwise, we are looking at just a regular six-speaker audio setup, but, I mean, realistically, the Harman Kardon is amazing. I'll get to the sound of that one in just a moment. We've got... Oh! so I don't press buttons. So we've got our equalizer there, speed adjusted volume. So as the vehicle increases in speed, it's going to automatically adjust the volume as necessary. And then we've also got our surround sound. So if you want a more immersive experience, we can toggle that on or off if we want to. We've also got our aux volume offset and then our auto play mode. So when we hook up devices, will it automatically play? Yes or no. Moving back out, that's going to be the basics of AM FM. Sirius XM, we've got a few other options there. So we go to our favorite. We can also add in a favorite for the artist or for the song. So if you want to make, so if you have an artist that comes up, like you like Bone Thugs, uh, Thuggish Ruggish, so you could literally have it set up where if the artist or if the song comes up, it's going to give you a notification letting you know on top of that. We can also replay the song if we want to. Moving back into audio, no sort of changes at all when we're in Sirius XM versus just our regular AM or FM. But that's going to be the basics of the main audio screen. Next up, we're moving into our climate. So as of right now, climate controls are currently off. So as we start adjusting, so we're just going to go controls there, series of options. But if we turn our climate on for a second, so I actually do have to start this bad boy up. There we go. So as you can see there, we've got our audio controls on. And right along the very top there, we've got our max air conditioning, air conditioning, air circulation, our front and our rear defroster. Oh, that's going to be toasty. Let's adjust that. So one of the cool things is that we could adjust all of our climate through the screen there or we can just get all of our controls there, just right down through our center stack. 
Now, a few things, as you can see, we can have it go to our winch, or to our face, feet, combination of all the above, and we do have the option for dual zone climate and control inside of this. Now, one thing to note, if our driver passenger sides are different, we can just hit the sync button and it's gonna automatically sync the passenger to whatever the driver side is. We can turn the whole system off very easily if we want to. And then as you saw there, we can also easily adjust our fan speed directly through the screen if we want to. Moving down from there, we've also got some additional controls. So we've got our auto dimming rear view mirror, might be available depending on the version of the vehicle that you're in. And then this specific one, because this has the added Daytona edition package for this vehicle, we've got leather seats. So we've got our heated and ventilated front seats there. And as you can see, so heated, ventilated, we can turn these things on very simply once the vehicle's turned on. But doing that, it gets a little loud. Like this is the 5.7 Hemi V8, but look. Oh. So nice, so nice. But if we go back to our controls now, so we can now toggle the heated ventilated seat on or off if we want to. So really, really nice. We've got our heated steering wheel on top of that. And again, that's going to come depending on the version of the vehicle that you've got. And obviously like this specific one does at least have that base option there. So you can see, climb it off, go into accessory run mode. And we've got those other options that show up again. Moving into our controls. Ah, I get it, I get it, we're turned on, we're turned on, ah. So we've got our base controls there for the driver passenger side, and we can also control some other ones again down in that center stack. Moving over, oh, actually, I guess I missed one thing. We've also got our added settings. So settings, series of other options. We're gonna get into all of these different settings as we go through the bottom there, but that's gonna be the base for the climate as well as the climate controls on top of that. And moving into our apps. So apps, we have a series of options available. So apps, I want you to think of pretty much every available function inside of the Uconnect media screen. Now it's not everyone, but it's the majority of them. So let's kind of start off and go one by, line by line here with our performance control. Ah, of course, we've got to be in the run position. Okay, so this is a nice one. So we've got a series of different options that are available for this mode. We've got our different drive mode setup. So this is going to be our base setup. As you can see there, we've got our current mode as default. So if we go into default, do we want our engine to be on normal or sport? Paddle shifters, do we want to toggle them on off? Traction control, same idea. Do we want to have it normal or sport? And then steering, do we want normal, uh, sport, normal, or comfort? Sport steering tightens things up versus comfort steering loosens it a bit. So you're just going to have to crank the wheel a bit more as you go. But that's going to be your base setup. We've got the option for the sport mode setup as well, which as you can see, paddle shifters on, sport, sport. Oh, actually that should be in sport mode for sure. And then we've also got our sport normal as well. So a few different options for all, all of these things, which is amazing. And moving back, we've also got launch control. So we can easily set our RPMs ready when we can have launch control kick in and then activating launch control. We just push the button there and then we're going to give her a little bit. Now that's going to be the base of this main page. So specifically for the performance control. And then we've also got some other options. So we saw in the controls, we would have our driver heat, ventilated, etc. We've got our projection manager, which is going to be all about our phones. So paired phones, we currently have a few that have P Diddy, that's amazing. So we currently have a few devices that have been connected previously to the vehicle. We can add in a device, which we'll get to when we get to the phones. We can look at our paired audio sources and our projection manager. So projection manager is when we get into Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, which I will demonstrate when we get into that phone. Moving back, we've also got our Wi-Fi hotspot. So a vehicle is equipped with an onboard modem and it's nice. I love how Dodge just makes it so simple. So it literally walks you through the whole process, but you can use the, wire, the vehicle essentially as a wireless hotspot for a number of devices. Uh, as you saw there, so you do need a data only plan in order to be able to get this as an option, but it is available there. We can set up our hotspot and then once we do, we can also view all the connected devices. So we can easily enable, disable there if we'd like. Moving down, we've also got our SOS mode, our assist mode, our, go, our activate services, which oh, I don't think this is gonna work right now. Okay, perfect. Okay, so it is kind of loading some things up there. So we've got our Uconnect with our Sirius XM Guardian. So it's, I don't, well, yeah, I was going to say, I don't think this is going to actually work. So it's essentially going to be for SOS calling and things like that directly through the vehicle. So we can activate now. And this one, I'm just going to go remind me later. Basics for our notifications. I think I'm going to need one other thing enabled for this to show as well. Yeah, so you connect. So as of right now, so no notifications available, our little info, and it's going to let us know. So if there's any recalls and things like that, it's going to let us know right through the screen. We've got our performance pages next. So performance pages, slightly different than the other pages that we saw. And I'll show you what I mean just as this thing loads up. 
All right. So as you can see, we've got our performance pages now. So we start off on the home screen there. We've got our current power. We've got our gear, G-Force, and we can add in an additional widget if we want to. So whether that's our gauges or our timers. So we'll add in the gauges there, and you can select which gauge you'd want to show. So it is kind of nice that we've got so many different options available inside of this thing. We can add in timers and things like that as well. Moving down, we do have all of our timers that are available. So... Oh, there we go. Perfect. So we've got our 20 meter, 100 meter, etc. We can save as we go, or we can take a snapshot of our performance all at the same time, which, I mean, if you're taking this thing on the track, I freaking love that this is built right into the screen. So Dodge, kudos that you've brought this into the vehicle. I love it. We've got all of our other gauges. So we had some selectable ones on the homepage, or we can just look through all of our active gauges there. We can also click through in order to get to each individual gauge. And then we can move across by going along the very top there. So we can move left to right just to kind of see exactly what's going on with each individual gauge as we go. We've got our G-Force monitor for braking acceleration. We can see all of our peak performances there as well. Different options for our engine. So we've got our power, torque, things like that. We can see what history we've got and then we can see the gear that we're currently in. I love it. It's so good. And then we've got, oh, was that? Actually, hold on. So we've got that. Oh, I missed one. We've got our engine. So same idea. So we've got a ton of different options available there for power, torque, oil pressure, things like that. And then we've got our dyno. So we can see exactly what's going on as we go. I'm going to start the car up for a second there just because it just makes the dyno so much better. Ah, of course, we've got to reload, but okay, here we go. So as you can see, we're there, but as we give it a little gas, you can kind of see us peaking there as well. We move into our engine and we can see all the live performance as we go here, as we start to rev the engine, as we drive. And then same idea, like as we're kind of going through, this is gonna update dynamically, just depending on what's currently going on in the vehicle. You can see our current battery usage there. And then we've got all of our different timers on top of that. But the performance pages, if you're gonna be tracking your vehicle, really, really good option to get yourself familiar with the performance pages. If you wanna be able to save it and essentially better yourself every time you're on the track. So as you can see there, I'm kind of pushing between different modes. We've got a regular mode, accessory mode, and then our run mode, which more or less turns the vehicle on without starting the engine. Starting the engine, we actually have to hit the brake, hit this again in order to rev it up and get things rocking. But moving up, we've got a few other options there. So we can jump into our app manager, see what apps are currently running, currently nothing. We can turn our heated steering wheel on. We've got our auto dimming rear view mirror. We can jump into our climate, or our media, I should say there. Oh, uh, we're in apps again. We can also jump into our climate settings, our control, our phone, our settings, and then the audio settings. So that's what I mean. Like everything is accessible through this Uconnect app screen along the very bottom. So if you wanted to jump in, you could kind of navigate through each one, or you could just go to the app screen in order to kind of select whatever one you'd like to as you go. But lots and lots of options looking at what's available inside of this screen. All right, next up, let's look at adding a phone into the vehicle. So as of right now, we don't have any phone that's currently connected. So we're gonna hit yes, we wanna pair phone. And on our phone, all we're gonna do is just make sure that Bluetooth is turned on. And we're just waiting for, there we go, you connect to show up. Make sure the numbers match up. Do we wanna allow contacts and favorites to sync up? Yes, no, I'm just gonna hit don't allow for now. Do we want it to make it to the favorite? So if there's multiple phones connected to the vehicle, it's going to let us be able to select between which one we want as the favorite. So if there's multiple phones, it's who gets connection priority. And we can also activate our Siri assistant there as well. We've got recents, contacts, keypad. We've got some other options for pairing. So we can look at our paired phones, audio devices. So we can again, get back into every phone that's potentially connected to the vehicle. We can move back and go to our paired phones again, or our projection manager, which again, because we're not connected through Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, nothing currently showing up there, but we at least are fully connected there. Now, if we jump back into media for a second, we're gonna go into our audio. Oh, actually, my bad. We're gonna go into select a source. <laughs> and we've got Bluetooth audio now. So I do have some songs on the phone, so we would be able to connect over our phone audio instead if we wanted to go that route. But it really is that simple connecting a phone to the vehicle if you want to. And as we saw earlier, we can just jump back into our phone, go to all of these different options, go to do not disturb mode, or we can also reply with a text message. And then we can see the current status for the vehicle. So we can see that my phone's connected there, battery level full, with my Siri in there as well. And one of the cool things is that you saw it earlier, we can also press and hold the, there we go. So we can press and hold on the steering wheel in order to be able to activate our Siri assistant. So we just press and hold the voice command prompt and then three, two, one, launches into our Siri assistant. So it is nice, we can do that on the Apple side of things and it's fairly easy to do. 
Next up, setting up Apple CarPlay inside the vehicle is also very straightforward. Now, one thing to note, we are still a wired connection. So Uconnect 4 is wired. I'm hoping within the next year or two that the charger gets its refresh to the new Uconnect 5 screen, but we're still on the 4 as of right now. Now, getting to the port, you're going to see the, kind of, the camera move a tiny little bit because the USB ports that we need to get to are actually in the armrest. Oh, so we go there. And all we do once we're plugged in, we're just going to take our USB cable, plug ourselves in, and we're just going to unlock the phone. All right, perfect. Do we want to allow CarPlay while the phone is locked? Yes, we want to allow, but I love it. Like it's two seconds and we are fully connected. But as you can see there, we've got Apple Maps, we've got Google Maps, and we've got Waze, and we can use it all directly through this screen. And look at this, super responsive. We can search for addresses very easily along the top. We can look at our favorites. We can actually activate our mic to search that way as well. If we press this button along the very bottom, that brings us back to our main screen there. And we can get into on any of these other map applications if we wanted to. We've got music, we've got podcasts available as an option. We can look through our library, browse, things like that. Moving back, we can jump back to the main Uconnect screen, which we can also do just by pressing any of these other buttons down there. We can launch into our audiobooks as well. So quite a few different options that are available. Like I love how easy this is. We can kind of just kind of adjust as necessary, go through different options as we'd like to. We can save podcasts and things like that as well and activate all of our save podcasts. But this is neat because like I said, this specific one doesn't have factory navigation, but we still have the flexibility through the Apple CarPlay side of things to use Google Maps, Apple Maps, or Waze. And it's super responsive. I love the way that this thing looks. It's just laid out nicely. Like Dodge, good job. Like all of the small highlights and things like that just make this look very different than what we'd find in some other manufacturing vehicle, manufacturer's vehicles. But one of the cool things is that on the Apple CarPlay side of things, we can also customize the way that this looks to a degree. So if we go to our settings we go general, CarPlay, we just select our vehicle. We can either allow CarPlay while locked, yes, no. We can delete it from our via, from our phone, or we can customize. So let's say if you're a bigger fan of listening to your podcasts and you want your audiobooks up there as well, you can adjust these things out as necessary. We can delete different apps, so we remove the calendar. It shoots down to the bottom there, so we could just add it back in if we want to. Or if we kind of move things around a little bit too much, we don't like what we've done with this, we can just do a reset reset layout and that's going to bring everything back to our factory defaults there instead and we can swipe across screen so this is technically going to be the home screen for apple carplay so we've got our whatever ways whatever map application was last opened we've got our basic search we've got our podcast or music we can go between different songs there we've also got our calendar along the very bottom and then we can kind of swipe out in between as necessary but it's super straightforward now if we click on carplay or sorry if we're off of any other screen we can click on carplay to jump back inside we go to our apps, projection manager, and we've now got that phone that's showing up because I connected CarPlay. And then we've got our CarPlay there, so we do have the flexibility of being able to enabling or disabling CarPlay, making this phone the favorite, or we can forget the device all at the same time as well. One thing, in order to be able to forget the device from CarPlay, we actually have to be disconnected. So, boom, we disconnect, we can now forget the device. We just hit forget device, and it's forgotten it from our projection manager, so CarPlay is no longer connected. And then to actually delete a device from the vehicle, all we're gonna do is click through, we can disconnect, delete it, or make it the favorite. So all we're gonna do is just delete. Yes, three, two, one, and the phone is now deleted from the vehicle. And it's that easy connecting an iPhone and setting up Apple CarPlay inside of this thing. All right, next up, setting up an Android device is the exact same process. So if we were on any other screen, all we're gonna do, let's say we're on media, whatever the case may be, we're just gonna go back into our phone there and all we're gonna do, exactly what we wanna do. So we wanna pair. So all we're gonna do is just pairing along the very bottom. We can look at our, all, of, all of our different devices, paired audio, we just go add device. And same idea, all we're gonna do on our phone, we're just gonna wait for Uconnect to show up there. Oh, there we go, perfect. All right, so you connect. So all we're gonna do is connect there. Perfect, and the pins not match up, so we're gonna hit okay and yes. Perfect, do we wanna make it our favorite phone, yes or no? Uh, but, um, for this one, I'm just gonna say yes, so it bounces that phone right up to the very front. Do we wanna allow access to contacts? Uh, we're gonna say no for now. All right, so fully connected there. And as you can see, we can hop in, we can disconnect it, we can completely remove if we wanted to go that route. So we're connected. So if we go back again and back, we've got our favorites, we've got recents, keypad, messaging. So the reason why some of these are grayed out is because I didn't approve messages or contacts to be connected. But obviously if you did, it'll automatically set that one up. We can jump back into pairing again. 
jump inside. So if you wanted to go back through and have all of those different things set up, we could just delete the phone and then reconnect it. But we are fully connected, moving back into our media along the bottom, different sources. So if there was audio available on this phone, it would show up as an available audio source there as well. And then back inside to the phone. So that's simple. We can see what's going on with our current battery levels. We can see our current connection there as well, but it's really straightforward. So very similar to what we saw on the iPhone side. And then very similar to the iPhone side, we also do have the option for wired Android Auto. So we're just gonna fiddle with the USB cable, get ourselves plugged in, opposite end of the cable. We're plugging ourselves in there. And welcome to Android Auto. So we're just gonna unlock the phone which, why isn't it letting me unlock with my finger? Perfect, there we go. We're just gonna to unlock to continue. We're gonna hit next on the phone. And it should take a second there. Three, two, and we are fully connected. So as you can see there, we've got Google Maps stretched across the entire screen, very responsive. So we could just do our pinch to zoom in there. I love it, so good. We can kind of go in the center there. We can move it up. So if we want our north up versus different options for our views, so different perspective views, we can also go plus or minus to either zoom in or out from there. We've got a few different options for searching. Along the very bottom, we can also look at our traffic. We've got our guidance, route options, and things like that. So this is specifically on the Google Maps side of things. So we can avoid motorways, toll roads, and things like that. And back out, pressing the buttons along the very bottom here will do different things. So we've got our main screen there. So this is going to be our main screen for our Android Auto. We can hot button press to get back into Google Maps. We've got our sound. So all of our, there we go, perfect. So we've got all of our different media there. We've also got our notification center, and then we can also activate our Google Assistant. So we can activate our Google Assistant that way. We can also press and hold the voice command prompt on the steering wheel to activate our Assistant this way. And then we've got a few other ways, just depending on how you have your phone configured. But it is nice. Now, one thing to point out, this phone actually does have the Waze app installed. But as you can see there, I don't have Waze as an available option. So unfortunately, as of right now, we are just looking at Google Maps as our only available option there. So I'm like, fingers crossed, like hopefully we see Waze available on Android Auto soon. It's just not available as of right now. So hopefully that was coming in a future release. We're just not there as of yet. But very similar to the Apple side of things, we do have the flexibility of adjusting our settings on Android Auto. So we just search for Android Auto on our phone. We go into our settings. We can look at our currently connected car, previously connected car, or we can customize the launcher. So if you want podcasts along the top, it doesn't do it dynamically. So we actually have to disconnect from Apple Car, uh, from Android Auto, I should say, and then relaunch in on our phone and the vehicle in order for any changes here to take into effect. We still can customize it, it's just not dynamic the way it is on the iPhone side of things. But a few things, we've got our Google detection, so we could also say, hey Google, and that's gonna activate our Google Assistant as well. We've got our day night modes, we can start Android Auto while the phone is locked, we can toggle the weather off, we can also, so as of right now, so we can disable wireless Android Auto, which the vehicle itself doesn't support wireless, so that setting essentially is moot at this point, so it doesn't matter. But very similar to the Apple side of things, we can easily go into our podcast, we can go to our maps and a number of other things right through this screen. As I mentioned, just button press to get into our maps, screen there in order to get back home, and then if we go into our apps, projection manager, we've got the Android that's currently connected, we're also, we've got the flexibility of disabling Android Auto if we want to, but we can't forget the device from the vehicle again until we disconnect. And now we can forget. So we're removing Android Auto from the vehicle and pressing back again, we can jump back into the phone. As you can see there, we're right connected back over Bluetooth. So it's pretty straightforward to do. And as we saw earlier, in order to be able to remove the phone from the vehicle, we just go to where you connect. We go there, paired sources, there and we can disconnect or we can delete but it's that simple being able to add a phone to the vehicle so that's the basics of adding in a phone so really straightforward in order to be able to do practicing settings along the very bottom gets us to a series of other options that are available now so we can change out our language so if we want english french or spanish we can change out some options for our display so as of right now it's in the auto mode what that's going to mean is that we can we it's automatically going to adjust the brightness just depending on how bright it is outside and then we can also manually adjust if we wanted to go that route we can set different themes which is kind of neat so if you like different color patterns and looks and things like that we can easily adjust you can kind of see the background changing there a little bit as we go so we've got a few different options that are available oh there we go oh that's kind of neat haha <laughs> all right and back the touchscreen beep we do have the flexibility of turning this thing on or off. So not too loud, but we can adjust it as necessary. We can also have our screen time out there if we want to. 
different options for our units. So do we want US metric or custom? Voice, we've got some options. So as we press the voice command prompt on the steering wheel, so as we press that, this is our command list. So whether or not we want that one to show up is yeah, going to be a matter of preference. So do we always want it to show up? Or do we want help or do we never want it to show up? And then the response. So do we want the vehicle as we go to, let's say, change stations? Do we want it to say changing to 94.9 or do we just want it to do it? So that's the difference between brief versus detailed. Different options for our clock. So we can change the hours, minutes, or the format. So that military time or AM, PM, etc. And we've also got our camera. So we've got our backup camera delay or our backup camera guidelines. So vehicle's currently not started, but if we were to fire her up for a second, throw the vehicle in reverse. So we've got our guidelines there. So whether those ones show up or not, going to be a matter of personal preference and what you like to see inside of your vehicle. And let's go back, cycle through into our run mode again. Moving back into settings, we've also got our safety and driving assistant. We've got our park sensing system, so we can have it for the sound to display or strictly a sound. And then do we want the volume to be low, medium, or high? We've also got our hill start assist. And from there, we've got our mirrors and wipers. So tilt mirrors in, when we're in reverse. So that means that as we throw the car into reverse, it's going to tilt our side mirrors down so we can see what's going on on the ground next to us there. Rain sensing wipers, yes, no. And then do we want our headlights turning on when we flip our wipers as well? So a few options there. Different things for our lights. So headlight delay, when we go to lock the vehicle, do we want the headlights to turn off automatically? Do we want them staying on for a few options there as well? Do we want the headlights to illuminate as we approach with our key fob on us? Headlights with wipers again, or do we want to have our flashlights with the vehicle as we lock it? So do we want those lights flashing, yes or no? Different options for our door. So do we want to have the vehicle automatically unlock when we go to stop? Do we want to have the lights flash as well? So again, with those flashing lights, ah. And then do we want to sound the horn when we lock as well? So as we go to lock, do we just not want it to happen? Do we want it to give us a beep once or with a second press? And then when we remote start the vehicle, do we also want to have any sort of a horn sound? Do we want to have options for our key fob lock? So when we go to press unlock on the fob, do we want the driver's door become unlocked or all doors become unlocked? And then our passive entry. So that means that as long as we've got the key fob on us, we would have the flexibility of being able to open up the door just using the little button on the outside. And then we've also got some different settings that we can link to a specific key fob. And moving down, so that's going to be the basics there. We've got our seats and comfort, so easy exit seats. This is only going to be available if you've got power adjustable seats. And what that means is that when the vehicle's off, it's going to lower the seats and back it up so you can get out of the vehicle a little bit easier. And then when we automatic and when we remote start the vehicle, do we want to have the heated ventilated seats come on or the heated steering wheel? Yes, no. Or are they automatically going to come on regardless? So will they never come on? Will they come on just with a remote start or every time we start the vehicle? And key off options, so same idea. So do we want to have those easy exit seats come on? Do we want our different delays there? So head delight delays, etc our audio options, which we've already seen this one, so we can adjust what's going on with our balance fade, equalizer, things like that. Phone Bluetooth, which we saw this one earlier when we connected our phone. Sirius XM, so we can tune to start. We can skip out certain channels, so if there are stations you just know you're never going to want to listen to, we can select individual stations and it'll just skip it as we go to search different channels there. We've also got our reset options, so we can reset everything if we want to, restore everything to our factory default. So if we're going to sell the vehicle, definitely doing a, a reset there. And we've got our base system information. We can see all of our software licenses and things like that. So I know lots of things that we covered off there. There's quite a few different options available. And then I mentioned that the only thing that I didn't cover off would be the navigation. But with navigation, we would be, have the ability to be able to search easily with addresses, GPS coordinates, and things like that. But as I showed you, you don't need factory navigation because we still have the flexibility of relying on Google Maps, Apple Maps, or Waze using either Android or iPhone devices. But that's everything you need to know about the Uconnect screen inside of the 2022 Dodge Charger. All right, next up, so that's the basis of... Basis, ah. Next up, so that's...